Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Nofri. Uh, today, I would like to give you a little presentation about uh, time series analysis uh, and forecasting using Python. So, uh, my presentation will be just an introduction about time series. So, first. This is the outline of my presentation. First, uh, when we talk about time series, what is time series? Time series is uh, an uh, observational data that is uh, based in time. So, uh, the example of time series data, like uh, the annual rainfall and uh, the number of sales, the airline passenger, and Many things in, in in the world. There are many time series. So we we are going to in time series. We are going to uh, doing an analysis to uh, make a model of the time series. Also, we would like to predict the future. So the important thing of time series is how we can predict the future. How we can forecast using time series analysis. So when we talk about time series, uh, when I get back to the last slide, so this plot is in the x-axis, this is the time and this is the, uh, the data. So the data is based on time. And how do we model this data? First, we can model this data using uh, the variable may be the time. Also, we can model the data using the observation before uh, the actual time, like this, uh, this scatter plot. This is uh, the number of rainfall in Los, uh, Los Angeles. This is uh, the rainfall in today, for example, and this is the example of the previous year. So we can see the, the pattern from the data in order to find if these two variables are correlated or not. Also, we can uh, do some analysis like here. This data, if we see this, uh, there's uh, something, a seasonal pattern. So you can see there's a uh, the pattern from from year to year. So this data uh, also can be modeled using time series analysis. So this is the example of the data. So this is the, the monthly sales. So we can see that uh, in during a year there is uh, a pattern from year to year. Also, time series uh, is also correlated with stochastic process. Stochastic process is uh, this is the formal definition of stochastic process. Maybe I will not talk uh, much about this. But uh, the important thing is stochastic process, time series is the realization of stochastic process. And it is uh, related with uh, stochastic process and statistics and probability. So we model the time series using the uncertainty. Okay. Okay. So there is uh, there are many uh, terms in time series. First, uh, we see this. There is auto covariance function auto correlation function so if we talk about auto so uh, it means that the correlation of the variable with it variable itself but with different time length so it so that's why it is called auto correlation so auto correlation and uh, this is will be the main part of time series analysis so we model the data based on the autocorrelation. 
Good. Then there are uh, terms for white noise process. White noise process is uh, uh, simply a random process. When we talk about time series, there is a noise that, that this noise is uh, is assumed to be random. Also, there is a terms like random walk. Random walk is uh, like the name, random walk. So you walk randomly. So uh, the data from the data of today uh, is only uh, related with uh, the observation from uh, previous time. This, so this is what we can say random walk. This is the example of random walk. Also, uh, there is a term uh, stationarity. Uh, stationarity is uh, when we have the data, if the data have, uh, is const have um, constant mean, uh, it, it is called stationary. It's also when they, they have uh, constant variance, it is also called stationary. So, uh, we go to time series models. One of the model in time series is first is moving average process. So when we talk about white noise, so this is the A is white noise. So the moving average process is a process that is represented by the, combi the linear combination of the white noise. It is called moving average process. Also, we have autoregressive process. This is uh, much more uh, understandable. So uh, you see this. This is the, when we model YT. This model YT is modeled by using the observation uh, in the previous time, like the YT minus one, YT minus two. Yt minus, yt minus p, etc. This is autoregressive process. So, when we talk about regression, usually in regression we have uh, variable y and variable x. So, uh, x is uh, explaining uh, the variable y. But here in time series, the variable yt is explained by the the variable yt in different timeline. So this is the uh, the general form of uh, white noise moving average and autoregressive process. It is called ARIMA. ARIMA is one of the most widely used time series model and one of the the oldest uh, time series model. So when we when we study about time series we have to study ARIMA. So ARIMA it, it tends it stands for autoregressive integrative moving average. So in this model ARIMA our objective is to, is to find the order of this model. So when we get back to this model, so when we want to model the data which, what is the value of this P1, P2, and Vp, and which model we use, uh, either only until Yt minus 2, or Yt minus P, or only Yt minus 1. So this is the analysis of time series for determining the, uh, the order of the model. So this is uh, another terms, partial autocorrelation. Uh, it is correlated with uh, the other terms, uh, the previous terms, autocorrelation. So this uh, this terms is also used in order to find uh, the correct model in ARIMA. Also, this is the the formula of the autocorrelation, partial autocorrelation. And how do we build our ARIMA model? So 
in order to build the model, we have a, a procedure called Box Jenkins procedure. This Box Jenkins procedure start from identification. It means that we 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 find the the value of p, d, and k. So this is the order. So like the autoregressive process, we model the data with y t minus one, y t minus two, or y t minus how many? So this is the identification. After we we identify the order of the model, so we do parameter estimation. So we estimate these parameters using several uh, techniques like maximum likelihood estimation or conditional square. Also, after we we estimate our parameter, we are doing some diagnostic checking because Arima model have a strict assumption, so we have to check if the, the model uh, satisfy the assumption. Uh, this is how we uh, determine the model of Arima. So uh, maybe in the demo I will show you how uh, what is called by tail off and cut off. So when the auto correlation function is uh, tail off, it means uh, the auto correlation function is significant until the infinite time, and the partial auto correlation function cuts off after uh, some length. So we will use the uh, Arima PD0 model and vice versa. So we will see later. So another model of time series is uh, we usually use neural network for uh, time series modeling. So neural network, well, we know that uh, it is uh, one of the nonlinear model. So somehow Arima model is to uh, strict with with many assumptions that we can use uh, uh, machine learning algorithm. One of them is neural network. So this is the 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 equation of the neural network model. This uh, this is called uh, fit for work neural network or multi multi layer perceptron. So in neural network, so we still use the same variable to model the yt. So we model yt using the, the value of yt with different timeline. But the, the model is different because there is a non-linear term here where uh, the g is the activation function. We can use uh, many activation function like ReLU, uh, uh, hyperbolic tan, or logistic sigmoid this is the architecture of the uh, neural network this is the architecture of neural network with only one hidden layer in this case I will uh, show you uh, this uh, simple neural network so this is the input and this is the output the output is the variable yt and the input this is uh, the variable that we will determine, like yt minus one or yt minus two or yt minus how many. So in this case, the the data only model by uh, itself. So uh, we don't use another variable here. Uh, so it is this is also called univariate time series. So it is only one variable. So. Uh, there is one uh, real example of the time series. This is the uh, the roll motion. So if you know that the roll motion is one of the uh, sig motion. So uh, I will show it you. So when we talk about a ship, there is a six degree of freedom. So uh, there is a translation motion and uh, rotation motion, so the ship can can uh, can rotate and can translate back and forth. So what uh, I, I'm going to 
analyze is the roll motion. The roll motion is one of the rotation motion in uh, shaping. So the the data uh, actually it's not uh, real data of the ship, but it is a uh, data that is generated from uh, simulation study. So we built uh, uh, a ship, uh, a small ship that is uh, represent the the real ship, and then we generate the the wave, and then uh, there will be a sensor that capture the data. So, so this data is uh, collected by the sensor. So we we are going to to find the, the pattern of the data, of this data because it is important to find the pattern of the data uh, uh, because of we want to know the stability of the ship. So uh, the methodology in time series, uh, like the other uh, machine learning tasks like classification and regression, we, we will split the data into training and testing or uh, when I uh, what I see what I say here is in sample and out of sample. So we train the model using this uh, in sample, and then we we predict the data using the model, and we evaluate with this out of sample data. And then the 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 prediction accuracy we use root mean square error. So we are going to find the model that have the minimum um, root mean square error. So I will show you the the analysis time series analysis using Python. So here we are. I'm using several packages. In Python, we have uh, stat model package for uh, statistical model. And also we have scikit-learn for machine learning algorithm. So here, uh, in time series, I will show you that there is there are many patterns in time series. That time series is consists of uh, several components. Like first, uh, there are level level of the value, also the random the randomness, the trend effect, seasonal effect, and the calendar variation effect. So I will show you one by one. So first we have uh, the 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 pattern of a random data, like I said before, the the white noise process. So here I use several packages like uh, NumPy, Pandas, people. So uh, the, the random data, the, the point is like this. So you see this, this, this there is no, no pattern, it's just random. So this is called the random data. So in time series, there are uh, several components like trend. So when we have trend, the data will uh, monotonically uh, go down or go up. So it's the, the time series of the with trend effect. So this is the the model of the time series using with the trend effect. Also, we have this seasonal effect. Like this, so we can see that in every 12 period, uh, there is a same pattern. So this is called seasonal effect. Also, there is an additive seasonal effect. So it is the combination of seasonal and the trend effect. So uh, they not only have a season seasonal effect, but also there is a trend here. Also, there is a multiplicative seasonal effect. So. So 
This is the difference between the additive seasonal effect. The, the pattern is still the same, but they have trend, but here they get bigger. The seasonal effect get bigger when there is uh, multiplicative. Also, they have uh, an effect of calendar variation. Calendar variation, uh, uh, there are uh, many examples in calendar uh, variation in Indonesia because in Indonesia, uh, we celebrate Idul Fitri and the calendar of Idul Fitri doesn't follow uh, our calendar. So, we can see that there is a shift of the, the, the uh, of the pattern. So this is called the uh, calendar variation because we use different calendar. Also, this is the plot of calendar variation with seasonal. So this is the there are many examples. So uh, in order to model the the, the, the example of the data, I use Arima model, so this is the data set. Here, the data set, so we, we, we compute the, the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation, so we can see that by using this autocorrelation, we can determine which model is uh, uh, the best model for uh, predicting the data. So here this is, uh, uh, actually it's, it's very complicated to find the model, but uh, I will show you that the, the order of the model is here. The Arima 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, uh, 9, 19, 20. So here uh, we use a library uh, in Python called Stas model. This is for Arima modeling. In order to model Arima, we can use Stas model. Also, after we model, we can forecast the the, the, test, the testing data. And then, after we forecast, we can uh, measure the accuracy of the forecast. So we see this, this is the actual data and this is the forecast. So we are going to use, uh, when we compute the, uh, the, the mean square error, we can see that the, error, the root mean square error is 0 0.24. So we will compare it with neural network. So neural network is uh, usually uh, better than Arima model. So we can use many more. Uh, we can explore more in neural network because we can use uh, many hidden nodes and find the best model. So here I show you this the I make the function uh, neural network. Also here I am uh, I do uh, so we try to find the best architecture of the neural network so that we can uh, predict better than the ARIMA. So this is the neural network model. So uh, I'm doing a looping of the number of the hidden nodes. So we can find from this looping, so we can find the, the, minimal, the minimum root mean square error. So we can apply this architecture to forecast the data. So we have uh, Oh man, this is 200, so. Okay, I, I have the, the base, actually. Yeah. So actually, in neural network, yeah, you, can, you, you can tune the parameter, so, uh, so, so that you can find the, the the best architecture of the neural network. It is only a simple neural network with uh, one hidden layer. So we can see that the comparison of the forecasting 
using neural network and using Arima. So here we we get the root mean square error 0 0.14. It is less than the the the, the forecasting accuracy of uh, Arima model. It is way better, and we can see this the time series plot. So this is the so this is the, the actual data and the the blue one is the the prediction of Arima model and we can see that this is the prediction of neural network model. Actually, uh, we can uh, do more on uh, this neural network. We can maybe uh, add more hidden layer or uh, we can add more inputs in order to find the the best architecture of the neural network. So, uh, in conclusion, that well, we can see that uh, neural network is one of the promising algorithm for forecasting the data. But uh, the important thing is, it's not the it's not about the aspect. Uh, it's not about the the algorithm. It's not about the neural network, but uh, it's actually about the the input, which input we we use to forecast the data. So, uh, so that's that's more important. So when we use wrong input, it will forecast badly. So you have to to choose the the best input so that it can forecast uh, with good performance. So I think that's all of my presentation about time series. Give a buzz to Anna, please. Oh, we have a bit of time. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, um, usually if we do some statistical notation, uh, commonly if for statistician use R. Yes. And R is one of the uh, many uh, tracing uses. Uh, which one is the best, Python or R? Uh, and second, um, can we uh, do some? You give an example in uh, multivariate analysis, multivariate time series analysis. Can we do multivariate time series analysis using Python also? Uh, for example, like G star, uh, spatial, temporal, uh, space time. Thank you. Actually, I've, uh, I've been uh, one year using Python, so uh, before I, I use R for statistical analysis, so actually I'm, I'm not a software engineer, I'm a statistician, so I usually use R, so, but uh, right now Python is uh, uh, popular because of uh, machine learning and the data science, so I try to explore uh, Python. But, uh, and I see that uh, Python will be uh, a promising uh, programming language for especially in machine learning, data analysis, and statistical <coughs> analysis. And, uh, actually, there are many packages and libraries in Python, uh, in R, but uh, in Python for time series analysis, uh, I think it's, uh, it's good. Uh, it's uh, it's good enough. So like, uh, like you said that for we in Python we can also uh, do some uh, multivariate analysis. It is provided by the uh, library Start Model. So uh, you can explore explore it. Also, uh, my concern my concern using Python is I want to um, explore. Uh, machine learning for forecasting because, like, uh, we know that uh, there are uh, libraries like TensorFlow, etc. So, uh, I think it is also promising not only for image classification, but I think it will be promising for forecasting today. Is there any more question? Or nothing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, um, uh, from your 
opinion. Um, because uh, Ari, Arima, uh, Arima AR Arma is a uh, not flexible model. Machine learning is uh, usually using flexible model. And we can easily, from uh, Arima, we can estimate the parameter. Usually from the statistical team, CCN usually want to know deep in the model. But for neural network, uh, fuzzy system, there is kind of heuristic model. What is your opinion as a statistician from this? Usually, uh, statistician don't, don't want to use the conventional statistician, don't want to use machine learning. So that's not statistics, that is a competition of things. What is your opinion? Uh, uh, I think I'm a flexible man, so if it uh, uh, it depends on the, the objective of our our research. If you want to know the the relationship of the variable, what causes this variable uh, changes? So we we might use the statistical uh, statistical model because it is uh, it can be interpretable. It is easy to be, to interpret. But when we use uh, the model like neural network, so uh, we cannot uh, we cannot interpret the, the our model, but uh, it has good performance in forecasting. So it is it depends on uh, the objective of our research. Thank thank you for, thank you very much everyone for coming. So if you have any more questions, you can come to me directly, and we will be having the next session at three twenty. So this will be a coffee break. Thank you very much.